So this clip is going to talk about the plumbing, starting with the main tank. We're going to drill holes for the exit ports and side gauges. Then the aux tank. We need to drill a hole for the exit port. And then we need to connect that to the main tank and the pump. We'll start by locating the holes. I just installed the tank and use a short cutoff pencil. Uh, that gives us a ballpark. We'll just find the center of those drill pilot holes and then I'll uh, open them up a little bit if I need to make some adjustments I'll do some filing to recenter the hole and then drill it up to final size and that final size depends on whether what kind of grommets you're going to use and what size plumbing just keep in mind that these holes we've drew are going to be much bigger than the actual when holes. you're looking at your aux tank just a side note, finger strainer is going to go in here. This is your main exit port uh, where the fuel leaves the aux tank to head towards the main. This extra port up here is just in case you want to install an auxiliary vent to this tank. Normally, of course, it's vented through the, the cap, the gas cap. Uh, but if you want an auxiliary tank, they provide an extra port for you. Uh, the main tanks don't have that extra port. Uh, so if you want to install a vent line to the main tanks, you have to modify your tank for it. If you put the finger strainer in the aux tank here, you can see where that's going to be. And then kind of give yourself a, an outline to kind of verify where your hole's going to be. Okay, now that we've cut the holes for the uh, fuel tanks, immediately adjacent to the tanks anyway, the next thing we need to do is connect the aux tank to the main tank. It's going to require a series of holes that'll start from uh, this rib and head that way. Now the tank sits right here, the exit port is right here. And the way I'm going to do it, uh, and the way I did on the other wing, is Bring a line out, have it curve 180 degrees to get to the pump, which will be right here. From the pump, it's going to come out and enter this rib through a hole right here. And that same location is on each rib is where I'm going to drill the holes all the way down to here. Once it comes to here, this is going to be a bulkhead fitting. And from there, it'll tee into the... Into the uh, the side gauge line for the main tank. So just like for the aileron cable, I made a simple template out of some poster board. And I'm going to lay up on the ribs. And I'll be able to use that to locate the hole in each rib. So I'll mark, punch, drill a pilot hole in each rib, and then open it up with the uh, unibit. Okay, so I've cut all the holes through all the ribs for the aux transfer line. I'm using 3 8 line, terminating in a bulkhead fitting here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is mounting the auxiliary tank uh, pump. I run the line around like this to a pump. And the pump is going to mount right here before it sends the fuel on through those holes that we drilled earlier. So the steps for this are going to be first removing this uh, stiffening bracket. So I have to drill out these uh, five rivets, pull this bracket off, and then I'm going to make a reinforcing uh, kind of stiffener plate, a mounting plate, for the fuel pump. Uh, the fuel pump will mount via some bolts but the plate is going to be riveted into the section here that I'm going to mount it to. Once I've got the plate riveted in, then I can uh, remount the portions of this bracket uh, on, on the rib that, that'll still fit. So here's the bracket in place. You can see I bent up the edges to make it just a little bit stiffer uh, vertically. Drew the holes and then I went with a pen 
on the back and marked where the existing rivet holes are. I figured I might as well use those. So you can see where I marked them on the back. And now I'm going to uh, drill out probably that top hole, cleco this plate into place, and then uh, drill the other two holes, and then match drill um, a handful of other rivets. Uh, then we'll drill the quarter inch holes for the AN4 bolts and uh, put this puppy in place. Okay, so let's go into detail about the line between the aux tank and the mains. Starting with the aux tank, which we have in position here, we've got a finger strainer. I don't know if you can see that. Finger strainer sticks in about that far, and then you connect your AN6 uh, uh, adapter here. It goes from, from your finger strainer, and then of course your normal aluminum tube parts. I use 3003 VersaTube, 3 8 uh, because it's really easy to bend. I don't need to use any tools, I just bent it by hand into the shape I wanted. So it comes around here. You can see I actually get, might have over bent it through here. I think I have a little bit of flattening. I might have to remake that. But in any case, um, this comes down and connects to this um, hose here. Um, now this is a three eighths hose um, and it's really difficult to get this aluminum tube into this hose and a trick that I found uh, from the internet is to soak the end of the hose in gasoline and that causes it to swell. I soaked it uh, overnight. It swells just enough. It's still a challenge to get on but you can get it on much easier than otherwise. And then I used the uh, wire clamp to hold it on. And then another wire clamp at the other end connecting to the uh, pre-filter for the pump. Then here's our standard pump for the aux tanks. And we talked about the mounting plate and the uh, quarter inch and four bolts. Now there's another adapter here uh, that, that goes from this a uh, quarter inch NPT out uh, on the pump to the AN6 uh, plumbing here. Um, now using 3 ace plumbing, according to Mark, saves quite a bit of time when you're transferring fuel from the aux tanks to uh, your mains. So that's what we went with here. Uh, this goes through a series of holes, which we talked about in a previous video with uh, rubber grommets in them. Uh, I accidentally drilled this hole a little too big so I wound up having to drill it out to uh, uh, an inch and using a larger grommet. But anyway, you can see this is a straight shot. It goes all the way down to uh, here. This is a little expansion bend. It just allows for expansion and contraction a little bit without putting force on the, uh, on the other parts. And this, of course, is our elbow, bulkhead elbow. Now as far as getting this long piece in here, there's no straight shot uh, to get it unless you unless you drilled a hole here. If you're really set on using the 50-52, uh, uh, you could probably get away with drilling an access hole here uh, to stick one long piece all the way in. Um, and then you still have to bend it once you got down to the 
down to the tank uh, pump here. But uh, if you use 3003, you can just bring it in through the lightning holes and, and just kind of bend it as you go and straighten it and, and, it, and it works out fine. I put it in without any rubber grommets in the holes initially and then I cut the rubber grommets um, and, and then just kind of slowly wedged them in around the tube. It's a pain, but on the other wing I tried putting the grommets in and then kind of sliding the, the tubing through all the grommets and the friction from the tubing passing through eventually just sucks the grommet out of the hole and you wind up doing it this way anyway. It, it can be done, it's just very slow and tedious and putting the grommet in after the fact is less of a headache. A couple of things about this mounting plate. When you make yours, this may seem obvious, but I'm good at overlooking obvious things. Um, this hole, the hole in the flange for the pump is actually an oval. So you have some wiggle room as far as where you locate the bolt hole behind it in the rib and in your backing plate. I highly recommend locating those as far out on the flange as possible so you have more room to access your uh, nut here with a, uh, a socket or something like that. I put it so close that I had to use a box or a, an open end wrench and it's kind of annoying and slow. Also when you're putting your rivet pattern on, uh, on your plate, make sure you leave plenty of space around your bolts for again the same thing. You want to be able to get your tools on top of the bolt and uh, a wrench in there. So, so space your rivets out a little farther away from your, your bolts. I had to drill out a couple of rivets because they were too close. Um, otherwise, I really like having these bent uh, edge, edges on here that uh, give it a little bit more rigidity. And uh, um, I think I mentioned before, but make sure you give yourself plenty of space when you're mounting it under the rib. Uh, plenty of space from the skin down here. So you can, again, so you can get your bolts and your wrenches and stuff in there. That's uh, <laughs> a couple things that I've managed to mess up. So there you go.